Hello everyone, I hope you're keeping well. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the Canon RP. And in particular, is it gonna be good for you as an architecture photography camera, an interior camera in 2023 and beyond? So perhaps you're just starting out or you shoot interiors commercially. Well then, is this the camera for you? For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing and you can also check out my website in the description below. So I've been here in Turkey doing a personal project and I've been taking the Canon RP with me. I've had it on another trip previously, but I'm now starting to put this to good use. I finally had a chance to set it up last night. So we're gonna be talking about the Canon RP and whether it's a good camera moving forwards for you, a first camera or a second camera. It's worth bearing in mind as well that I am looking at this camera from an architectural point of view, an interior photography point of view. So the Canon RP is a full frame sensor, first of all, and it's a 26.2 megapixel sensor. In 2023, I would say that's pretty standard. So there's no disadvantage there by using something like this for interior and architecture work. So what are the benefits of this camera off the bat? Well, the first one is gonna be its size. If you were using this as a first time camera or a second body, this isn't gonna take up much space in the bag at all. In fact, as a main body coupled with the right lens, you could have a very compact system, chuck in a tripod, and you could probably get all of that in one small rucksack to take into shoots with you. A great little option then. I'll pop the weight of this on the screen now, but it's a very lightweight option. If you're gonna chuck this in your bag as an additional body, for example, I don't think it's gonna really make that much of an impact, especially when modern lenses weigh as much as they do. So then the fact that this is a full frame camera opens up a world of opportunity. When you're photographing interiors and architecture like I do, you probably want to start out thinking about a full frame camera. To be able to get into full frame photography and to capture all of the interiors and architecture in a full frame sensor for under a thousand pounds or in some countries dollars is an absolute steal. You could not do that when I started out. There was no such thing available. Most full frame cameras were well over the 2000 mark. So that point alone, this makes this a steal when you're starting out on your journey. If you're adding this as a second camera, it's still then an affordable option. You don't want to maybe invest as much into a second body, but having a backup available to you on a, say, a personal project like I'm shooting here in Turkey, or if you're just using it for back of cam video or something like that, this is a great option as well for you too. The reason why full frame is amazing for interiors is because when coupled with a wide angle lens, you get much more in to the composition. So when shooting interiors, you normally do multiple exposures. I've talked about that before on the channel. You can check it out in the link here. However, this camera gives you the ability to be able to do single exposures and lift the shadows, such as in the room that I'm in here. The other thing that a full frame sensor provides is exquisite detail and resolution and actually better dynamic range and noise handling as well. So not only can you get low ISO options coupled with a tripod, you could also get an amazing result with you boost that ISO up as well to say something like 1600 if you're doing something at night. With a full frame sensor, it does tend to handle light a lot better than a crop. So if you were to buy the Canon RP, you are actually future-proofing yourself a little bit as well. And the reason for that is it's got an RF mount system. That RF mount was the lens mount that Canon made a few years back when it released mirrorless cameras. The RF mount system is going to be used by Canon in the future. Well, they've only just designed it. So many lenses they make in the future are going to be with that lens mount. And there's some amazing ones coming out in the future for architecture, including the possibility of a, a manual focus and an autofocus tilt shift lens, which would be amazing. Some of the lenses that we use in architecture photography tend to be wide angles, stuff like the 15 to 35, the 11 to 24. We also use potentially some 35, 24 mil lenses as well. And of course, tilt shift lenses like I've got on here. So when you get the EF to R adapter on here, you can actually go backwards in time. I can actually put this on here. This is the old 24 mil tilt shift lens by Canon. So to be able to open this world up with the mount adapter 
is amazing because actually these lenses are becoming more affordable by the day. And as you kind of progress into your architecture and interior journey, it's gonna be something you probably wanna look at down the line, especially if you're doing commercial work. This one here, you can now get a Mark I version for two or 300 pounds. You can get the Mark II version that I've got here, and that one will set you back just under a thousand. And other lenses like the 17 mm tilt shifter are more expensive, but as you progress, with this camera, you've got the ability always to add it on the front. The other benefit to this camera is the flip out screen and it's large LCD. If you're doing ceiling work or architecture work, you want to be able to see details on the back of the camera. And with this LCD, you definitely can do that. Other cameras at this price point don't actually have a flip out screen, which is kind of annoying. Getting into full frame photography and having the ability to look upwards, but also flipping out that screen to do so would be a great advantage. The other thing we can do is press the info button to zoom on in to the back of the screen and check the image quality. And having a screen this size allow you to do that easily. So in architecture and interior photography, we do actually use manual focus quite a bit. That could be quite a struggle if you're using an LCD like this to see if it's actually nice and sharp. You used to have to actually go in press the info button, press the magnifying glass, go into the image and check it when you're actually taking the photos. But this camera has focus peaking, which is a great assistant, your assistant on site. Many cameras in this price point do not have that feature. In fact, usually it's provided to mirrorless, yes, but normally at a higher price point. Focus peaking is a great benefit, especially if you're using those manual focus lenses. It shows you highlight priority where is in focus on the back of the LCD. And you can select in camera yellow, blue, or red to highlight which parts are in focus and which parts aren't. And the fact that the RP's got it for under a thousand bucks, under a thousand pounds, is amazing. I actually wanted the R8 when I got this camera because it had full frame, uncropped 4K video. This does not, it has cropped 4K, but it does shoot everything 1080p, you know, full sensor size. Clients actually tend these days to want more and more video and photography in a package that you present them. Of course, for personal work, that doesn't matter as much, but actually the fact that client work is probably your bread and butter, when you're shooting interiors and architecture, you're ultimately gonna want clients and moving forward, they're gonna want more video. The fact that this is crop 4K could cause you a problem if it's your main camera body. However, most professional photographers do actually have two camera bodies. And if you're thinking about it like that, then that means going forwards, you could upgrade this camera, but keep it and use this as your second one. If this is gonna be your second camera, then I don't think that's a huge problem because your main one should be able to shoot better quality video. So this camera takes the Canon LPE17 batteries. And I wish Canon would start putting the LP6 batteries that they put in the R5 in many other of their camera models. Because if you add the LP6 batteries in this, it would be a bit, little bit of a powerhouse. I believe even the Canon R8, the new one, does not. It has these batteries too. And the problem with these is, of course, is its battery life is much smaller. It's a smaller battery, its capacity is smaller. So you're gonna end up wanting like four or five of these in your camera bag when you're doing a full day shoot, especially if you're doing video clips. So another thing to mention while we're in here is it only has one SD card slot. Now, it's not really a huge problem anymore. These cards don't fail as much as they used to. However, for a professional, that might not be a great option. You wanna be backing up in camera as and when you can for client work. However, for somebody starting out, it's not a huge problem. But if you've got no other option, this is absolutely fine. One little tip I can give you to sort of help you along the way with that is I tend to put a large card in here. I've got a 64 gig in this one, or 164 gig, should I say, card in here. I actually tend to leave it in here and then connect the camera to my laptop when I want to take the images or the video clips off of it. That way, you're limiting how many times you're pulling it in and out, less chance of damaging the card. Okay then, to summarize, this camera is great for whom? Well, pretty much. I would say if you're getting into architecture photography for the first time and you're looking for a full frame camera, then this could be the option for you, especially if you already have a back catalogue of Canon glass. The fact that it can future proof against future releases as well of, of lenses uh, with the RF mount is amazing for me. The fact that it's got focus peaking, as I mentioned, is a great benefit too. The sensor size is amazing, the full frame capabilities, but also 
this flip out screen gives you options, especially shooting ceilings or wide shots and looking at detail on the back of the LCD. However, don't rule it out if you're looking to get a second body. This is a great option for anyone looking just for small clips to add to their YouTube videos like I do, or as a second option in case something goes wrong with their main camera and they're off on a personal project. You want something that's gonna do a great job, but also not diminish image quality. Something like the RP is gonna do just that. There's another thing that I need to mention. My Canon R5 is actually a full frame 40 megapixel plus sensor. And this one's 26, as I mentioned, which isn't a huge difference, by the way. But you can increase this when you're using it with tilt shift lenses, especially when you're making panoramics. Three panos joined together would make you the equivalent of around 70 megapixels when you've cropped the image down, which, of course, is plenty enough to deliver for client work in a digital age. That sums it up. I hope you've enjoyed the video about the Canon RP. If you've got any comments, please leave them below, and I'll come back soon. I've got some other videos coming up from here in Turkey. I hope you've enjoyed what I've been putting out on the channel recently. And uh, yeah, I'm off to get some food as usual. And uh, I'll see you all again very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now, guys.